The sun launches a solar storm from a new cycle sunspot, and bright regions are rotating back into view on the sun's backside. Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather calms down a bit this week, but the sun is still giving us quite a show. We had a solar storm launch from a new cycle sunspot as it's rotating to the sun's west limb. Now it's not Earth directed. It's actually directed a bit towards Parker Solar Probe and it could graze it as it travels south of that spacecraft. Meanwhile, it lets us know because it's from the new cycle sunspot that the solar cycle 25 is definitely on its way. Now, unfortunately, the rest of the sun right now is still pretty much at solar minimum. We don't have any other sunspots to even worry about, so that means solar flux is still quite low. For amateur radio operators and emergency responders, it's going to stay like that for quite some time yet. And on top of that, you are war photographers. It looks like we're going to have to wait about another week or so to get another chance for some fast solar wind so you can get some more aurora. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux continues to be incredibly low. Back on the 6th, we did get a couple B-class flares, and that was due to region 2744, that new cycle sunspot that did fire off a couple flares at first before kind of quieting down. It hasn't really contributed much to the X-ray flux, and therefore, by proxy, the solar flux continues to be low. Now, around the 14th, it did fire a solar storm, but, geez, you can't really tell it by the X-ray flux here, so, you know, even though the Aurora photographers might be excited about this, well, it looks like us amateur radio operators and emergency responders really aren't all that excited because the solar flux is going to continue to stay flatlined easily over the next week and possibly two weeks before we get a reprieve. Switching to your solar storm conditions, we've been reasonably quiet until about the 8th when we got hit by a pocket of fast solar wind that actually bumped us up to active levels and then up to storm levels. And it was sustained long enough. We actually hit storm levels twice over the 9th and the 10th. And this was gorgeous for aurora photographers at mid-latitudes because it actually brought aurora as far south as Wyoming in the United States. But since then, things have calmed down and they've settled down and settled down. So now we're kind of sitting between unsettled conditions and quiet conditions, and unfortunately, these will continue here easily over the next week before we get another chance for some more aurora. And the recent solar storm brought us some gorgeous aurora, but pretty much all the shows were in the Western Hemisphere. We've got some beautiful views of aurora all over Canada. For example, this one in Ontario, and it was seen in Manitoba, it was seen in multiple places in Saskatchewan and in Alberta. And it even dropped into the United States. It was seen in multiple places in Minnesota. And it even went as far south as Wyoming in the United States. And then down under, they saw it in multiple places in New Zealand. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially backsided monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And what you can see kind of off to the Stereo's west limb there, you can see that finger-like coronal hole. That has rotated into Earth view, and it could give us a chance for Aurora here in about a week or so. But outside of that, Stereo's view is pretty much spotless, so there's not a lot going on, except if you look at Stereo's east, limb, over the last day or so, you're beginning to see those bright regions rotate back into view, and those are the remaining regions of like 2740 and 41, I think. I can hardly remember the numbers anymore. It's been like three rotations, and they're still there. They're not very strong anymore, but they could be boosting the uh, solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders in about 10 days, so we will continue to watch them to see whether or not they're going to survive. 
Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, well, things are pretty quiet right now, and it's pretty much the way things are going to be easily over the next week because we don't have any coronal holes sending us any fast wind anytime soon. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with maybe about a 20% chance of a minor storm, but that's pretty minor, if you know what I mean. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting normal to unsettled conditions with about a 10% chance of active conditions. So Aurora photographers don't expect much this week. We're going to have to wait to the end of this week before we get another chance to see some fast wind hit Earth and possibly bring us a little bit of Aurora. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, folks, so, you know, there's not much going on. Uh, this makes GPS users very happy. We have no risk for radio blackouts on Earth's day side, but it also means that the solar flux is almost in the mid-60s. Ugh, can you say solar minimum any harder than this? And unfortunately, amateur radio operators and emergency response responders, this is really what it's going to be easily over the next week and possibly two weeks before we get a reprieve with some new bright regions rotating back into Earth view. Sorry guys, this is just the way it is at solar minimum. Now also because it's solar minimum, we have a cosmic ray flux impinging a bit more than it normally would be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose. And and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely a bit quieter than we'd like it to be, but there are still some milestones we get to celebrate. We saw the first solar storm launch in Earth view from a region that's dedicated to the new solar cycle. So this does mean that solar cycle 25 is on its way, and that gives us new hope. Now, unfortunately, right now, the rest of the sun is pretty much spotless, so amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you're not getting too much. We're in the mid-60s for solar flux, which means dayside propagation is terrible. You're going to have to rely on sporadic E if you're in the northern hemisphere, and, well, I don't know, for southern hemisphere, it's probably pretty dismal right now. But GPS users, at least you guys are loving life. You should have some decent uh, GPS reception all the way around the globe, even at low latitudes because the solar flux is so low. Now, now, Aurora photographers, well, you guys have something to look forward to, but probably not until next week when we get a new coronal hole that rotates into the Earth strike zone and could send us a little bit of fast wind to bring you some more Aurora. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.